Jan Vishnu Pad Panamam Sabaraja Kacharya Asto Tarasita Sushimad. His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Kijai. Jan Vishnu Pad Panamam Sabaraja Kacharya Asto Tarasita Sushimad. Sringagur Srila Bhaktivedanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Kijai. Ananti Kodi Vaishnavi Kijai. Iskan BBT Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Kijai. Nama Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur Kijai. Premsako Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasari Gaur Bhaktavinda Ki Jai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopi Gopi Nasyama Kund Radha Kund Giri Govardhan Ki Jai. Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai. Mayapur Dham Ki Jai. Navadip Dham Ki Jai. Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai. Jamunamaya Gangamaya Ki Jai. Tulsi Devi Bhakti Devi Ki Jai. Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Transcendental Book Distribution Ki Jai. Harinam Sankirtan Jaga Ki Jai. Transcendental Prashadam Distribution Kijai. Gaur Pramananda Hari Haribo. All glories to the Sama Devotees Hari Krishna. All glories to the Sama Devotees Hari Krishna. All glories to the Sama Devotees Hari Krishna. All glories, all glories to Sri Shri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <coughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So today we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the third canto, chapter 6. We're going to read verses 13 to 17. I'll chant uh, the 13 to 16, and then we'll chant 17 together. Okay, so today's topic will be Karno. That's the topic of the day today, Karno. <laughs> it's, and it means the ears. So there's a quote by Satchinanda Swami. He says, we all know how to hear, but... A few people know how to listen. So there's a lot of difference between listening and hearing. Like they say, if speaking is silver, then listening is gold. That's a Turkish proverb. So uh, <clears throat> this is what we're, how we reprogram our brain is by hearing. And Actually, our brain is already programmed from so many distractions in society, so many varieties of material energy. And this is what we're consuming. So we're controlled by what we consume. So if you bring garbage into the brain, then it'll come out as garbage life. But if we actually listen to transcendental subject matters and listen to saintly persons, then we are consciously consuming, you see, what we hear, what we see, what we do. So either unconsciously conditioned or we can actually become conscious in our intentions, in our decisions of, you know, the decisions that we make actually make up your life. <clears throat> so I'd like to just read something here before we begin. So it's said that the recommended path of success is for one to engage constantly in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord in the company of devotees. So how can this be practically done? So many of us wonder and pray to try to understand. <clears throat> there seems to be other things to do. You know, when we sit down to read, our minds wander off. But in the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada drills into the reader the importance of hearing. And the Vedanta Sutra itself, it points out, and it ends with the statement, Anavriti Shabdat, that liberation is obtained by sound. So by material sound, a space within which material activities automatically unfold is created, and the soul helplessly struggles with physical existence. 
But spiritual sound expands a space within which spiritual activities thrive. People who hear about Krishna and his devotees, about the spiritual world and the nature of the soul, are drawn to act on the spiritual platform and engage in devotional service. The inner path opens for them. And Srila Prabhupada writes that one should hear for a long time, seriously, attentively, with patience. So actually hearing brings about a transformation of consciousness, which actually occurs due to a shift in our identification. So then we can constantly hear and chant. So Prabhupada gave the analogy of the bottle of honey and how the sweet contents of which we can only taste after you open the bottle and drink from it. So by lending time to hearing, one can sustain the excitement that initially made us take up Krishna consciousness. So a routine that lacks the constant freshness of hearing, Krishna Kata, is an enemy to the spiritual seeker because spiritual life is actually ever fresh. It's ever new. <clears throat> so Prabhupada wrote a letter to Aniruddha in 1969. He said, please continue to read the literature very attentively. Try to understand very soberly and you will feel ecstasy undoubtedly. The more we understand the spiritual literatures, the more we become engladdened. Lord Chaitanya has written, Ananda Ambudi Bardhanam. This means the ocean of bliss is always increasing. So continue to execute your duties with enthusiasm and patience. And I am certain Krishna will be pleased to make you successful on all accounts. So just to give you a little idea about hearing. So here's another interesting quote. It says, you cannot see someone unless you are willing to listen to them. And so this is what we have to do. So in the Srimad Bhagavatam, this is the first canto. There's this verse, O learned Brahmanas, when Sukadeva Goswami recited, recited Bhagavatam there, in the presence of Emperor Prikshit. I heard him with rapt attention, and thus by his mercy, I learned the Bhagavatam from that great and powerful sage. Now I shall try to make you hear the very same thing as I learned it from him and as I have realized it. So in the purport, Sri Prabhupada really brings on the point of hearing. And I'd like to just read a paragraph there. Simple hearing is not all. One must realize the text with proper attention. The word nivishta means that Sutta Goswami drank the juice of the Bhagavatam through his ears. That is the real process of receiving Bhagavatam. One should hear with rapt attention from the real person. And then he can at once realize the presence of the Lord Krishna in every page. The secret of knowing Bhagavatam is mentioned here. No one can give rapt attention who is not pure in mind. No one can be pure in mind who is not pure in action. No one can be pure in action who is not pure in eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. But some or other, if someone hears with rapt attention from the right person, at the very beginning, one can assuredly see Lord Sri Krishna in person in the pages of the Bhagavatam. So just see, if you don't want to hear, how can you see? So we have to be clear of what our aim is. We have to hear with rapt attention. And our aim is actually to surrender to Krishna. So if we don't focus on that surrender, then all kinds of varieties of material energy will haunt us. But if we do surrender, then Maya actually backs off. Because Maya is embarrassed to be in the presence of Krishna. 
So let's hear Bhagavatam with rapt attention so that we could become clear on who we are and what to do. So I'll start with verse 13. Nirbhinam talu varuno lokapalo visadareha jivayam sena cha rasam jayaso pratipajate. When the palate of the gigantic form was separated, separately manifested, Varuna, the director of water in the planetary systems, entered therein, and thus living entity has the facility to taste everything with his tongue. Text 14. Nirbhine avishno nase vishno avisatam padam Granenam sena gradasya pratipatir yato bavit. When the Lord's two nostrils separately manifested themselves, the dual Asvini Kumaras entered them in their proper positions. And because of this, the living entities can smell the aromas of everything. Text number 15. Nirbine akshini twasta. Loka palo visar vibo, chaksusam sena rupanam, pratipatir yato bavet. Thereafter, the two eyes of the gigantic form of the Lord were separately manifested. The sun, the director of light, entered them with the partial representation of eyesight, and thus living entities can have vision of forms. Text number 16. Nabinani asha charmani loka palo nilo visat pranane pranenam sena sam sparsam yena so pratipajate. When there was a manifestation of skin separated from the gigantic form, Anila, the deity directing the wind, entered with partial touch, and thus the living entities can realize tactile knowledge. Okay, text number 17, we'll chant together. Karnava Shavivirbino Dishnam Swam Vivishur Disha Shotranam Sena Sabdhyasya Siddham yena prapajate Karnava shavinirbino Dishnyam swam vivishur dishaha Shrotrenam sena sabdasha Siddham yena prapajate <coughs> Karnava shavinir bino Dishnyam swam vivishur dishaha Shodenam sena sabdasha Siddham yena prapajate
वैष्णवीस Karnal, the ears, Asha, of the gigantic form, Vinir Binal, being thus separated, Disnyam, the controlling deity, Swam, own, Vivisu, entered, Disha, of the directions, Shotrena Amsena, with the hearing principles, <clears throat> Sabdasha, of the sound, Sidhim, perfection, Yena, by which Prapajate is experienced. Translation of purport by Srila Prabhupada. When the ears of the gigantic form became manifested, all the controlling deities of the directions entered into them with the hearing principles by which all the living entities hear and take advantage of sound. Purport. <clears throat> the ear is the most important instrument in the body of the living entity. Sound is the most important medium for carrying the message of distant, and unknown things. The perfection of all sound or knowledge enters through the ear and makes one's life perfect. The entire Vedic system of knowledge is received by oral reception only. And thus sound is the most important source of knowledge. Jai Om Gyana Timuranda Shya Gyananjana Svakaya Chakshus Unmanitamina Tasmai Shri Gurve Nama Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Sapitamena Bhutale Swayam Upagadam Ayam Tadati Swapadantika Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Arveta Gadadhar Shiva Sari Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Vanchakopa Tubis Chakripa Sindhubra Chapatitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaisnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha So this conception of the Vratpusha, or the gigantic form of Krishna, is said to include all the dominating demigods, as well as all the living beings. Even the minutest, minutest part of a living being is controlled by the empowered agencies of the Lord. So since the demigods are included in this gigantic form of the Lord, worship of the Lord, whether it is his gigantic material conception or his eternal transcendental form as Krishna it also appeases the demigods and all the other parts and parcels just as much as watering the root of a tree distributes you know all the energy to the tree's other parts so <clears throat> Prabhupada mentions here in the first can in the second canto of the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam he says, consequently for a materialist also, worship of the universal gigantic form of the Lord leads one to the right path. One need not risk being misled by approaching many demigods for fulfillment of different desires. The real entity is the Lord himself and all others are imaginary for everything is included in him only. There's a verse in the second canon, chapter 6. His eyes are generating centers of all kinds of forms, and they glitter and illuminate. His eyeballs are like the sun and the heavenly planets. His ears 
hear from all sides and are receptacles for all the Vedas. And his sense of hearing is the generating center of the sky and of all kinds of sounds. So this word in the verse is called Tirtanam. And uh, Prabhupada mentions that sometimes it's interpreted to mean pilgrimage. But he says that Jiva Goswami says that it means reception of Vedic transcendental knowledge. So this is a, a Tirta also, is to hear transcendental knowledge. So in the second canto, there's a verse there that says, by developing the desire of the great sages to know, the ears, the power of hearing, the controlling deity of hearing, and the objects of hearing became manifested. The great sages desire to hear about the self. So in that per particular purport, Sri Prabhupada explains, and that it describes this image here. <clears throat> so he says, the Bhagavad Gita states that we should know Krishna as the Supreme Lord and that he's the sum and bone of everything. So he says, knowledge does not mean knowledge only of the laws of nature or physical knowledge, which are working by the direction of the Lord. The scientists are eager to hear about the physical laws working in material nature. They're eager to hear through the medium of radio and television about things taking place far away on other planets. But they should know that the power of hearing and the instruments of hearing were given to them by the Lord for hearing about the self or about the Lord. Unfortunately, the power of hearing is misused in hearing the vibrations of mundane affairs. The great sages were interested in hearing about the Lord through Vedic knowledge and nothing more. This is the beginning of oral reception of knowledge. So material nature simply supplies all the materials and actually Krishna is the one that creates everything. That's confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. Madhyak Sena Prakriti Suyate Satchara Charam that he's under his direction all everything moves. All moving and non-moving objects. They're in this cosmic creation that he makes. So in, in this verse, this is the verse uh, from the fifth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita it starts Shrotam Chaksu Sparsanam Cha you probably know that verse the living entity thus taken in another gross body obtains a certain type of ear eye tongue nose and sets of touch which are grouped about the mind he thus enjoys a particular set of sense objects so this is what happens we get different bodies according to our desires and there's eight million four hundred different thousand species that we can take so uh, in the next verse Shri Prabhupada explains why we don't see this happening that because we're our mind we're, we're foolish Prabhupada describes so in the next verse Shri Prabhupada explains here that the foolish cannot understand how a living entity can quit his body nor can they understand what sort of body he enjoys under the spell of the modes of nature. But he whose eyes are trained in knowledge can see all this. <clears throat> Prabhupada calls them vimudhas. They're blinded in their unending attempts to enjoy their senses because they identify the happiness and distress arising from the senses. So they remain unable to distinguish between matter and spirit. And what is the cure for this ignorance? Krishna says in the next verse of the Bhagavad Gita that the endeavoring transcendentalists who are situated in self-realization can see all this clearly. But those whose minds are not developed and are not situated in self-realization cannot see what is taking place, though they may try. So this is that we have to become knowledgeable, situated, and hear about transcendental knowledge so we can understand how this body changes. So we can see, you can take a quick view of how the body changes here. In this, how we 
can morph into living and different living entities. <clears throat> and with transcendental knowledge, we can understand why this happens, how this happens. And it's all through that hearing process. So that's it. There's an interesting quote I found. It says, 90% of the world's woe comes from people not knowing themselves, their abilities, their frailties, and even their real virtues. Most of us go all the way through life as complete strangers to ourselves. So this woe is an interesting word, which means great sorrow, distress, so many things. But you can look at this word woe as an acronym, working on excellence. So we can become full of miseries, or we can actually use our senses and our abilities to actually become excellent and understand who we are. And this other verse here is interesting. Learn what you are and be such. So this is what we're doing. By hearing, we can learn who we are and avoid a lot of woes of you know, thinking we're something that we're not. So Srila Prabhupada mentions in, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a book called the Shikshamrita, and there's a whole thai section on hearing. So it's very interesting. In one section he says here, so reading of the literature and hearing of the chanting is the medicine, and the prashadam is the diet. So if diet and medicine are properly administered, the disease of maya will be cured. But the physician must be always healthy. People may not say phys physician is ill himself. That means the preachers must be highly elevated character, following strictly the rules and regulations and chanting regularly in the temple. There may be so many odds in the progressive march of Krishna consciousness, but if we pin our faith on Krishna, everything will come out successful in due course. There's a nice analogy given in the fourth canto on the story of Paranjana. And there's a city which represents the body. And uh, it talks about how it represents how the tongue and speech and all these different things and the different ears. He called them gates. One ear is called Pitru and the other ear is called Devahu. So Narada Muni talks about this. And he says here, I'll just read here in the next verse. The city spoken of as Dakshina, Panchala, represents the scriptures meant for directing pravriti, the process of sense enjoyment in fruitive activities. The other city named Uttara Panchala represents the scriptures meant for decreasing food of activity and increasing knowledge. The living entity receives different kinds of knowledge by means of two ears, and some living entities are promoted to Pitriloka and some to Devaloka. All this is made possible by the two ears. So see, we can, by hearing, we can go to these different planets or even go to the Vaikuntha planets simply by hearing. There's so many nice quotes on hearing, but let's see if I could just summarize. So one may wonder how simply by hearing all desires can be satisfied. But this is because one who has identified himself as spirit soul he realizes that the demands of the body are not his demands, that life does not be depend on eating or drinking, water or sleeping, that life depends upon one's realization 
of his identity as the eternal servant of Krishna. When one has realized this, when he has heard sufficiently acted upon it and thereby realized it, then all material demands become nil. So, going back to understanding this universal form, it's described that it wouldn't act until the presiding deity presiding over consciousness entered the heart. And then the deity actually animated that universal form. So, this is in the third canto. There's a verse there that says, when a man is sleeping, all his material assets, namely the vital energy, the senses for recording knowledge, the senses for working, the mind and the intelligence cannot arouse him. He can be aroused only when the super soul helps him. So in that purport, Sri probably mentions that the relationship between the Vrat Purusha and the presiding deities or the living entities is so intricate that simply by exercising the sense organs which are related to their presiding deities, the Vrat Purusha cannot be aroused. It is not possible to arouse the Vrat Purusha or link with the Supreme Absolute Personality of Godhead by material activities. Only by devotional service and detachment can one perform the process of linking with the Absolute. So therefore, through devotion, detachment, and advancement in spiritual knowledge acquired through concentrated devotional service, one should contemplate that super soul as present in this very body, although it is simultaneously apart from it. So this is what we have to do, become detached from the attraction to this material prosperity, and then we can actually concentrate our mind on Krishna, on the super soul. But as long as our mind is distracted towards material things, there's no possibility of concentrating one's mind and our intelligence upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead or his super soul. So this is described there. So this is a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. And you may recognize it. Yashyam by Sruyam Manayam. Simply by giving oral reception to this Vedic literature, the filling for loving devotional service to Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality Guided, sprouts up at once to extinguish the fire of lamentation, illusion, and fearfulness. So again, here Prabhupada mentions in the purport how of all the senses, the ear is the most effective. And it works while you're asleep. It protects yourself because that's the only sense that's awake. That's the only one that protects us. So Prabhupada mentions there in the purport here, he says, the importance of hearing is mentioned here in connection with attaining the highest perfection of life, namely getting free from the three material pangs. Everyone is full of lamentation at every moment. He is after the mirage of illusory things, and he is always afraid of his supposed enemy. These are the primary symptoms of the material disease. And it is definitely suggested herein that simply by hearing the messages of Srimad Bhagavatam, one gets attachment for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. And as soon as this is affected, the symptoms of the material disease disappear. Srila Vyasadeva saw all the perfect personality of Godhead, and in this statement, it is clearly confirmed that the all-perfect personality of Godhead is Krishna. So this is how we develop our loving devotion to Krishna. So let's go to the next one here. So simply by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, we can have direct contact with Krishna. And what is the perfection, the ultimate perfection of hearing is described in a nice verse in the Madhya Lila. This is in the 21st chapter, text number 144. And this is the translation. The vibration of his flute is just like a bird that creates a nest within the ears of the gopis 
and always remains prominent there, not allowing any other sound to enter their ears. Indeed, the gopis cannot hear anything else, nor are they able to concentrate on anything else, not even to give a suitable reply. Such are the effects of the vibration of Lord Krishna's flute. So in the purport there, Srila Prabhupada says that in other words, a devotee who has heard the sound of Krishna's flute forgets to talk or hear of any other subject. This vibration of Krishna's flute is represented by the Hare Krishna Ma Mantra. A serious devotee of the Lord who chants and hears this transcendental vibration becomes so accustomed to it that he cannot divert his attention to any other subject matter not related to Krishna's blissful characteristics and paraphernalia. So that's the sum and substance of spiritual life, is that attraction to Krishna. So this is what we have to do. You cannot see someone unless you're willing to listen to them from that quote. So it's nicely described there. So this is the process uh, recommended. It's very simple and plain. Prabhupada says, it's just to create a favorable condition for hearing the message of Krishna. And Prabhupada mentions here that it makes it easier with song and music. So it's nice. So Prabhupada, there's a nice quote here. He says, everywhere, wherever Krishna Krita is spoken, that is Vaikuntha. And wherever I go to my branches, you, my good devotees, turn it into Vaikuntha. And I wish to be there where my disciples are. So we see of the nine processes, hearing is so important. So Prabhupada mentions that we must regularly read our books at least twice in the morning and in the evening, and automatically all questions will be answered. Always read and talk about Krishna between yourselves, and always remember that this life is but a flash only. We have to seek after our eternal life in Krishna consciousness and be transferred to the spiritual world in the association with Krishna. Continue to keep your present attitude and certainly everyone within this life, and even within this life, you'll be successful in attaining perfection of Krishna. So that's nice. I don't know if this will play here. Yeah. So just by hearing and chanting, we create a spiritual atmosphere. Wherever it is, any centers around the world. Prabhupada said that's Vaikuntha, and he wants to be there with his devotees. So anybody, any walks of life, they can take up this process. Simply hearing, finding out who you are. So that's it. Just wanted to end with some transcendental sounds. So if there's any uh, comments or questions or realizations, we could entertain them. Gonna end in a minute here. So any comments, questions, realizations? Jai. Oh yes, oh no. He's looking at his watch. Okay, well thank you for your kind attention. I'll go to Shrimad Bhagavatam.